You told me how in Ghana there's still slavery? That is correct. I, I was always impressed by his wide knowledge of all kinds of issues. He's not the chairman of the Board of Trustee of African and so mathematical sciences. All the governments, they say that uh, they will give us light, we should vote for them and we do, you know, we've been doing it every four years and nothing happens. I have known Dr. Ayensu for a long time. Say, let me say about uh, from the 70s. I've known Professor Ayensu for a period of over 50 years. When he was appointed as the chairman of Council for uh, Ghana Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, I was then the director general and he became the chairman of our council. Professor Yonsu has made significant contribution to the development of science, not only in Ghana, but Africa and the whole world. He was the first person to organize what's known as Pan-African Union of Science and Technology. Professor Yonsu is an eminent scientist, a scientist par excellence. Um, the four years that I worked with him, he exposed me to the realities of life. He was very anxious that Africa became endowed at the time with leadership which could foresee, oversee, which can oversee a quick development of Africa, given the resource base that Africa has. His concern led him to be recognized by the World Bank by making him part of a select committee to oversee development in Africa, uh, not as an employee of the World Bank, but as an advisor, an advisory group to advise leaders of Africa on how to approach development. Professor. You have a passion for your country. You want to see a better Ghana and Africa. How do we, as a nation, develop our country as it should be? First of all, on this very continent that we reside, I think uh, we are so blessed that we don't even know what is happening to us. There aren't many places in the world where if you assess the natural resource base of the continent, you look at even the little human capacity we have at our command, there should be poor people roaming the place. I believe very strongly that uh, the young people who are coming up right now are going to be very crucial in changing the complexion of the way we've been doing things since independence. The um, number of our leaders who are thinking about precisely what you've alluded to, in my judgment, happens to be few. But there is a glimmer of hope. And the hope is that um, there are quite a lot of heads of states who are now beginning to become sensitized to some of the fundamental problems that face this continent. You know, it's barely 50 years plus since we had our independence. And Ghana, uh, we were lucky to have a leader who had foresight. He knew where he was going. His total dedication 
was to ensure that in this country we start to develop. The few areas that he focused attention to, for example, in the area of energy, Nkrumah said that Ghana can never develop without energy. And what did he do? He strained every nerve to make sure that uh, we build Akosumbo Dam. At the time that he was doing it, believe it or not, there were some so-called scholars in this country who said that, oh, this man is only interested in prestigious things. And uh, they wanted to kill it. Some of them flew to the United States and they were interviewed and they said, the U.S. government should not help us to build. And I'm telling you this because I was there in Washington, D.C. myself. I was at that time at the Smithsonian Institution, which is the largest museum complex in the world. If you look round right now, you'll find out that literally all the major landmarks were put in place by him. him yeah. If you visit other African countries, you'll find out that he's more of a hero to them than even here, because their leadership, a number of them passed through Ghana. He literally helped them to go home and start to agitate to get self-government mm. so that uh, as a continent, we could do things. Yeah. There are several reasons why today we should try to recall history and uh, literally stop the extreme partisan activities that we have and focus attention on how best we could change the way we do business in our countries. And then, you know, on that note, I mean, I met uh, Mugabe in Zimbabwe, and um, when he found out that I was Ghanaian, he was like, he was taught by Nkuma. Absolutely. And he follows his ideology. Absolutely. And so you are right when you say that when you go outside and somebody's talking about your president, your past president, so highly, you know, and if in our country we're not speaking about him like that, then, then th there's a problem, there, there's an issue. You being a scientist, economist, and you know, very highly educated, do you think it starts with education? I mean, is our education system right at the moment? To be very honest with you, one of my disappointments since we got our independence is the way education has been denigrated into this level. In the olden days, somebody from our premier university, Legon, you give that person a second class upper uh, degree. He goes to London or Cambridge or Oxford and they want to give him first class immediately. Why? It's because the education system was exceedingly well grounded. Unfortunately, you cannot have very well educated students if the quality of teachers are not up to speed. I recall when I was in the elementary school, in secondary Methodist school, the teachers we had, and I'm talking about teachers who've gone to teacher training schools, they knew the psychology of taking kids who cannot read and write, start with A, B, C, D, and on, put A and B together, B and C together, and start making words. Now, let us be very honest with ourselves. You know, the quality of teachers we have, with all due respect, some of them, are really not ready to teach anybody. You know, you go to a village and uh, you find the person who is supposed to be the premier 
a scholar in mm -hmm. the place, he cannot put two sentences together. Then you know we haven't Very arrived. Sure. And I strongly believe that Ghana should put a lot of emphasis in education. And I'm delighted to find out at least, at least, our leadership. They've been talking about education yeah, and, so, yeah. and so on and so forth. But you see, we haven't put together the collective knowledge of the people who could help the country to get there. Unfortunately, party politics seems to uh, take over everything, which I think we have to minimize to the fact that the only party that is important mm. to this country mm. is Ghana. Yeah. Every place you go around the world, they respect intelligentsia, oh, yeah, you know? But here, we seem to behave as if we hate scholarship. And some of this emanates from our own leaders, believe it or not. They make people in academia look as if they are nothing. And yet, they are the same people running around begging uh, institutions to give them honorary degrees. You know, we should get back to fundamentals. When you compare Nkrumah's days to now, have there been any points where you could say, okay, this has been a good change since Nkrumah's time? Not really, because if you look at uh, Ghana's position at that time, you could see that we are becoming too country-centered to the point that uh, we are losing um, our ability and capacity to even interact with our neighbors the way we should. You know, on Krumah's time, we started to build the road infrastructure. He started with the Accra Tema Highway. Yeah. He was going to build the Golden Triangle to go to Kumasi, Kumasi, Segendi, Takradi, and back here. They started the road, and immediately you are accused. You know, this is prestigious uh, project. Today, the only decent road we have in Ghana is that first road. Since then, Successive governments come, they start the roads, the roads are torn to pieces before they even finish. Why? It's because quality doesn't seem to be a hallmark anymore. Professor, as a young boy growing up in Second D, did you always find yourself wanting to be a scientist? Was it, I mean, did you just like nature? Did you like, what, what was it? Do you want me to tell you the truth? Yes, I want the truth. The truth of the matter is that I actually wanted to be a boxer. Wow! <laughs> At the time that I was growing up, uh -huh. I thought I was physically very fit, mm -hmm. ready to take anybody wow. on. And when I got to Achimota, mm -hmm. we had a Catholic father who taught us biology, Father Lesage. He instilled in us the ability to be curious about nature. There was tremendous discipline. For example, every week you have to read a book. So, you know, you leave school and uh, you are fairly widely read. It kept us going and then we ended up where we are today. Yeah. So then you left Ghana and you went to university in the US. How was the, the cultural change from, from Ghana to the USA? I found the undergrad training in the US excellent. It was not just theoretical stuff. You know, I spent a lot of time in the field. Whatever you want to learn, they yeah. allow you yeah. and, and give you all the logistical support mm -hmm. to make this happen. You've written over 20 books. Yeah. Um, when, when did that start as well? When I was at the Smithsonian Institution, mm -hmm. the uh, National Geographic people mm -hmm. were just next door. And um, the journalists, they come to me and they said, Doc, I've been assigned to write about, say, palms. Mm -hmm. How do I start? 
And uh, of course, I had a ruler dex mm. of unparalleled proportions. <laughs> and I'll say that, listen, go to Miami. Mm -hmm. There's such and such a person there. I'll give you an the address. Contest. And I say that, go talk to these people. Mm. About six months, they come with a draft. And when you read it, you'll think these are the world's experts in the field. Wow. And I said, hell, if these <laughs> journalists can write like this, I've had more education than a lot room. of them. Yeah. I could also do the same thing. Professor, before we started the interview, we were talking about the, the kids on the street. And you told me how in Ghana there's still slavery. That is correct what I call modern-day slavery. When you literally rob these kids of what I think is their right, you are enslaving them. For me, this is unacceptable. Go to places where people are breaking stones and you'll find kids doing this continuously for a number of hours a day. What, what, what do you call it? The government has a social responsibility for these kids, just as the parents. In some parts of Ghana, we have no light. And so I know that you have come out with solar panels um, to go in some of the rural areas um, to, to give people light. I mean, in, in, in just in Accra, some parts of Accra, we don't have, we don't have any light. I was actually on an assignment to write Lake of Life, mm -hmm. which is the 50th anniversary volume yeah. for the Volta River Authority. Yeah. And I was on the Somenya Road, and I saw on the street a sign, no light, no votes. Mm. And so I got off of the car, and then I went into the village, and I said that, why don't you people want to vote? And they said, oh, all the governments, they say that uh, they will give us light, we should vote for them, and we do, you know, we've been doing it every four years and nothing happens. So I said, that, can I see your rooms? So I went into one room. There was an old lady sitting in there, and she told me that since she was born, she hasn't seen one bulb in a room that she slept before. So. I said, Madam, how old are you? She was 74, she said. And being as gullible as I am, I said, I'm going to give you some lights. I called the Energy Globe Foundation. The Energy Globe Foundation is an international foundation that wants to bring light to people who are off grid. Would you believe in a year, the school measured the productivity of the students. Mm -hmm. It's over 300 percent. Wow. We send some to other places, the women who weave baskets. Yeah. Their productivity has increased over 300 percent by just providing little lighting. Yeah, Papa no mum, woman by hatch about sixty years now. Umba just as only a quajuma, in sua ye benum cra eddi, a dany misa, a cana, a cadano, umbudi besia de so I di maomu. Asembrema, no baba catcher say, or hook up and be into on the boy or lighting. Some communities in Greater Accra does not have light. Energy Globe decided to demonstrate this solar light for all initiative in Tebu, which is a suburb or a community of Gamp. South Municipal Assembly in Greater Accra. The best thing I could do is to try to get as many of these simple sets.
Mammy, so woman, your light, yet, Yanni, yet that energy group for us, sir. What to me, why? Yes, sir, your light is here, Addy. Energy group for us, solar light for all. Energy group for us, yet, I was you. His Excellency, John Germani, my uncle, you know, he's free forever. Apart from this lighting, portable water to yeah. drink is going to be a major problem on our hands, if not even now. You know, we have 300 miles of the Volta. Mm -hmm. The water has a pH of about 7. Mm -hmm. It's actually drinkable when you uh, filter it yeah. and so on and so forth. The bulk of the water is going into the Atlantic to make more seawater. Why? And we have people mm. who don't have water yeah. to drink. In my own house, or my office, you get into my office, there's a dispenser there. Okay. That's where I drink my water from. It's not connected to any water, but you can get hot water and the coldest of water and the cleanest of water. Ask me, how, how? does this happen? <laughs> At the back of an air condition, uh -huh. you always see water dripping. Dripping, yeah. Yes. The water came from the room, from whence the air condition, yeah. and that water is in the atmosphere in the room. And so what I'm doing is I'm Collecting. capturing that <laughs> through filters, through reverse osmosis, through UV lights, and you have the finest and the cleanest water you can possibly have. First, I know you have loads of interest from development of biomass plantations to science and technology in developing countries to HIV. I know that you've been around and you've tested a whole heap of people. Why does HIV interest you so much? Years ago, I was the Secretary General of the International Union of Biological Sciences. And the president, since I had to spend quite a lot of time in his lab, I started to look at the virus. Mm -hmm. And we worked and worked and worked and produced the volume on mm. HIV knowledge protects, mm. which has been circulated worldwide to uh, study the retrovirus. Mm. Mm. Inter reacting with him and traveling extensively with him, I, I was always impressed by his wide knowledge of all kinds of issues, business related issues, uh, marine issues, uh, museum issues, and so on. We are even grateful in Ghana for his preparedness to help us to develop uh, a museum of remembrance and forgiveness to encompass this area of our slavery in the whole of Africa. Prosenso is, is also a very good um, writer because he has written several books, very, very interesting books. The Shanty Gold, which is uh, the Lake of Life, the, the history of Bank of Ghana, all of them are very, very excellent, well-written book. And he's a, a very a, a nice man, easy to work with, and uh, he's somebody who has done a lot in the world, and not only in Ghana, but in Africa and the whole world. Books, 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 books. I went into your, your one of your offices in, in your room, and how many books are in there? A thousand or even more? <laughs> and have you read everything that's in there? My wife tells me that uh, she's always baffled when people come to visit us and they raise any subject area and uh, I'll go to my study and, and pull a book. Put it out. <laughs> Obviously, I must have gone through that book or I wouldn't know the answer is there. Wow, uh, <laughs> wow. So, You've written, is it 23 to be exact, or is it 20? 26, 26 to be exact. 26 yeah. books. Um, and these are some of them. So we yeah. have the Bank of Ghana. So are these all commissioned? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Bank of Ghana at 50. The bank asked me to write it when they were celebrating their 50th anniversary. Okay. It was an assignment that uh, 
I cherish very much because what it does mm. is that uh, uh, it mimics the history of Ghana. Yeah. To write a book like this, yeah. you have to think of an audience. Mm. And the audience is the intelligent lay public. Most people hear about our banking systems, our fiscal and monetary policies and so on. But honest to God, they don't understand what you're talking about. Yeah. So you want to write it in such a way that without a dictionary, anybody understand. can read it and say that, my God, I understand what uh, the bank is doing, mm. you know. And then this one is your recent one, your most recent one. Yes. This is uh, the 50th anniversary of the uh, Volta River Authority. That also mimics the history of Ghana okay. and in fact tells you what the leadership role should be. Okay. And uh, Nkrumah exemplified this uh, okay. very much. And then this one? This is a book that uh, the, what is today Anglo Gold Ashanti uh, commissioned uh, for the 100th anniversary of the Ashanti Gold Fields Corporation. And it tells you about how the uh, gold industry started here uh, and very fascinating story, yeah. you know. And where can we get these books? Where can we get it anywhere? They yeah, are. They are even at the airport and okay. some of the. Uh... Talking to you, I understand now what your daughter said about you. She said to describe my dad in four ways. I would say that he's intellectual. He's principled, charismatic, and focused. Those are the. That's four. dangerous. <laughs> I Those don't want anybody to know me. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the four words that your daughter chose to describe you. Yeah. And indeed, having this interview with you, I can see that definitely. Intellectual, principled, definitely, yes. Charismatic, I agree. Oh, and very no. focused. Thank you so much for joining me on The Dental Show. Thank you very much, Denta. Thank you.